What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for a recap and review of The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 4, Episode 4. Maybe it's 3. I think it's 4. Wig Easy. And let me tell you what nothing easy about that doggone wig. You know who we talking about? Karen Huger. O-M-G. Why y'all do her like that? Y'all ain't her friends. Y'all are really not her friends. That just let me know right now. Y'all ain't her friends. We pick up, y'all, the next day after the party. That The after party to the party. Where Candace and Chris and Michael, Ashley, and Robin all went. Got a little more litty. Litty, 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 as uh, Candace would say. After the party, taking shots at the shots at the shots at the shots. And, uh... You know, Ashley, uh, we, go to, we go to Ashley, she's at the crib, and her and Michael are talking about the fact that she took those shots. Like, I can't believe you did all that. You know, because I'm supposed to be trying to get pregnant. That's what's supposed to be going on. And, you know, he's trying to get the scoop on everything that went down. Of course, Ashley, she said she blamed it on Robin. Robin had her drinking like that. You too old for peer pressure, ma'am. You too old for peer pressure. Anyway, um... Candace and Robin call each other and they are both discussing to the confessionals the party. Neither one of them wants to mention to each other what Michael supposedly said about him wanting to suck somebody's dick. Um, I am making the um, guess that it's, it's Juan because of the way that Candace said her response. Robin said that she didn't want to bring it up to Candace because she just got her friendship back on track with Ashley and she didn't want to ruffle the feathers. So basically she's thinking if she says something to Candace, Candace is going to run back and tell Ashley. That's the way she's saying. Candace says, I'm a newly married woman. I don't want to ruffle the feathers of nobody in marriage. So I don't want Robin to get upset. That makes me think that he said he want to suck Juan's dick. I think last week I said it was Juan, but he didn't specifically say a name last week. So, But that's who I believe that it is. Why, why else would Robin would be upset? She's, Robin said that she when she heard it, that's all she could think was, what the fuck? Yeah, I think it was Juan. It don't matter to me. I mean, it really don't. Um, like I said, I was I was so over last week with them trying to out Michael. I just think it's such poor taste for you to try to out anybody. I don't give a fuck what celebrity status they own if this is reality TV. Outing somebody who don't want to be out is fucking wrong. That's just... I know we getting a kick and a kiki off of it, but actually I stopped laughing. I did. I did. I mean, like I said, I thought that man is bisexual anyway, but this, this whole trying to out him on screen is such BS to me. Anyway... Giselle is over there making her honeydew list for her next man, which she needs to have it for her, for him to be a qualified person. She got the three names of the men that she have dated since we've been uh, watching this show all scratched out. Um, and she wants to basically um, capture her emotions in the moment and communicate her feelings like her therapist was saying. He got her journaling and everything. And I'm going to tell y'all, I got books on books on books on books. I journal my ass off. I journal. And if I didn't journal, I would probably be crazy, crazy. I'm crazy now, but I'll probably be crazy, crazy if I didn't journal. It does keep me sane. It keeps me sane. Oh, Lord, I need to write my diary right now. Mmm. Okay. So, anyway, Giselle feels that she needs to get in touch with her roots. If she knows more about her past, then she could understand why she's such an ass. That's basically what she's saying. So she's going to go to New Orleans. Her mom and daddy from New Orleans. Her daddy's still back there. He's about to turn 80. I'm going to go to New Orleans, dig up my family history, learn more about myself. I think this is going to make me a better me. And then I'm going to come back and share the shit with my kids once I figure it out. I thought that she should have took the damn kids with her. What better way for those children to get an understanding of who they are as people by actually showing them where they started. The hearing it secondhand ain't going to be the same. Just just show them where it started. I thought that would have been such a momentous uh, trip for her to take with her children. But no, she wants to take it with the ladies. 
Because they want to get to know me. They all want to say they want to get to know me. We don't know you, Giselle. Ain't nobody ever said it to you. Ain't nobody ever said we don't know you, Giselle. And you taking me to New Orleans ain't going to get me to know you because you don't even know who you are from New Orleans. Like, her, her parents from New Orleans, she don't even know her own connections. So how is they going to get people to know her? That just don't make no damn sense. You should have took them damn kids. You should have took them damn kids. Oh, anyway. I guess it's good for the show, I guess. Because, you know, Bravo always got to have a trip. I don't know. What what season, in what show did they start taking trips? And then it became a regular thing. These trips are to, to get all your feelings out. Just, you know, have all the fights that we're going to have in different cities and let people see us crazy. Be like, what show they on? They basically, they promote, this is publicity. That's exactly what this is. You go to these different cities, you act a plum ass fool, and everybody like, who are they? They the Real Housewives of Potomac. Oh, I need to tune in and see if I can see myself. That's pretty much what's going on. Anyway, so um, she's sitting down with the girls and she's talking about uh, her and Sherman breaking up. And, they, you know, they like, dang, we like Sherman. Because when Sherman was around, you was happy. You don't act happy when he ain't around. You always talking about we annoy you and we get on your doggone nerves. In that moment, she was already like, oh, God, please stop. They were sitting upstairs giggling like kids would do. And she was like, oh, please stop. Okay, I'm going to communicate my feelings. And they like, look, when Sherman rang, you're like, oh, Sherry, Sherry, so you're not worried about us. Don't get you, matter of fact, get married, please. You know what I'm saying? Giselle's like, I do not want my kids to think that my happiness comes from a man. But if that's what you exhibit, then that's what they see. I mean, I swear I just love her girls. I love her girls. Oh, I love her girls. Anyway, Karen and Candace, they go to the dentist. I kind of love their friendship. I really do. Uh, Candace says that she's like, Karen is the prime example of her relationship with Karen is the prime example of what she would want to have with her mother in a perfect world. Um, surprisingly, y'all, despite Candace's insecurities that she has about Chris around the other women, every time she gets around the other women, she kind of like bring out all of Chris's flaws in regards to his sexual nature. Uh, and I th it's a front because she's insecure about how the women feel about her being with Chris. That's all it is. Um, but despite that, I think Candace has become one of my favorite characters. I wasn't too sure about her when she first did the show. Her and, and Karen Hugo are, are my favorite characters uh, on the show. Monique, she, I, I don't dislike her, but I don't like her. She you know she's kind of in the middle. Robin, I don't like mm -mm. Giselle get on my damn nerves. Ashley, every time that motherfucker come on screen, I, I want to throw the fuck up. I cannot stand Ashley. Oh, and there was a couple of seasons that I was rooting for Ashley. Um, I didn't like her, but I thought she was in. She wasn't in the wrong in how they were treating her. But I didn't like her still. Ugh, I hated that I had to root for her that doggone season. But ever since she's been on the show, I can't stand her. I cannot stand Ashley. Mm. Anywho, Candace sits down and, and, and FaceTimes her mom, Dorothy. She want to set up some boundaries between them now that she's a married woman. Um, and when Candace starts dragging her damn words, Mom, I think we got some things we need to discuss. I know shit finna go downhill. I know what's finna go down here right there. Apparently, every time that Dorothy gets mad at her, she threatens to take away the condo. Now, Candace says that her, Chris, and her mama are paying the mortgage on the condo. That's what she said. I remember her saying that when they first came onto the show. But during this conversation, Dorothy said, you've been living there six years and you had the opportunity to pay rent when you haven't. So that's confusing to me. You've been living there six years and you had the opportunity to pay rent. Or you help them pay on the mortgage. Because if you help them pay on the mortgage, why would you be paying rent to them? So, I don't know. Make it make sense. But the way that they did the editing, I wasn't sure how Candace addressed that or not. Or she just let that shit slide. Or go try to go over our head. But I caught that shit. Anyway, every time, like I say, every time Dorothy get mad, she threatened to sell the condo. And she said her and Chris are saving for their forever home. Girl, y'all better work on that starter home. Forget the forever home. You you get your forever home when you start building a family if you ever decide to build one. Or when you finally make up your mind that you don't want one, then maybe you and Chris can settle into a forever home. But right now, you just need a starter home. You, matter of fact, just get into an apartment. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Anyway, um, Dorothy is like, you know, you're just ungrateful. I should be the one setting the boundaries. 
And Candace is trying to be really mature about this situation. She's like, you know what? We both could benefit from boundaries. How about that? Let's do that. Um, Dorothy say, I don't want to keep arguing with you over your mouth. <laughs> no, your mouth, mama. I mean, let's just be honest. You know, I know they edited a lot, but I don't know how we got from zero to the color orange. I don't, it don't make sense. How did Dorothy go from the zero to the color orange? We talking about setting boundaries and you talking about you don't want to argue over her mouth. She being ungrateful. And of course, Candace ends up in tears like she always does. She's like, look her, you married now. Stop all them damn tears. Candace say, you right. I am married. How about let's start with some respect? I mean, because let's be honest. Her mama has no respect or any type of consideration for her or, and or her feelings. Um... And it, we clearly see Candace trying. She's trying to have a conversation. Like I said, as she expresses her feelings, but it, at some point it's like, it's exhausting, it's tiring. It's like, what the fuck? I understand. Maybe that's why I like Candace now. Because I, I, see, I see me in her. I do. I understand dealing with that in your fucking life. And you just trying to hold on. You're trying to bite your tongue most of the time because that's your damn mama but yeah. mm. after a while Candace just closed the laptop like fuck it you know that conversation ain't going nowhere that's all she doing is continuously to berate her and she fucking fed up you know she fed up she is fed up she even was posting about it on Twitter and I was like girl she's like this is gonna have to be something I'm gonna accept that no matter what, if I move on, get my own, my mama's still going to be the same way. I said, no, you ain't got to accept that shit. And I really was talking to me and not her. <laughs> that really was. But she liked the comment and retweeted it. Robin. That's all I'm going to say about this scene right here. Robin. Robin Dixon. You excited about Juan opening up a door in your absence and the fact that he's going to spend five days with his children that he has not been estranged from because y'all been lying to him about the fact that y'all not married anymore. So they don't even know the daddy not with you anymore, but he's going to spend five days with him and this is such a big turn on for you. Girl. Girl. What the fuck, Amber? Oh, this is good stuff, she says. Oh, my God. Well, Giselle takes her girls to an expo. She want to show her the business side of them, you know, that she can do things without a man. I thought this was a good idea. This was, you know, the, allow them to see how mama doing the damn thing. I wish I had that type of example in my life where um, an adult, not even just a woman, but just an, an adult to show me um, some positive things about being an adult. Like, I can make my own way. I can make my own money. Then maybe I wouldn't be struggling so hard right now to find my peace of mind, my balance, and my push through to go get shit done. Like, I, I didn't have that type of example nowhere. Like, my cousin, like, when she went to college, I was like, that's the shit. I guess my cousin was the one I looked up to. She was like two years older than me. But as far as an ad adult, like, I could go ask my mama right now, dog on now, what you want to be when you grow up. I never thought about that. She makes fun of my damn vision boards because she thinks it's such a, such a stupid thing. Like, like setting goals and having dreams, and ideas is such idiocy. It's so I didn't have it growing up. So I like the fact that Giselle is taking her kids to the expo so she could see they could see how mommy is like moving. It, Moving and shaking, you know, making money. I, I like that. And um, so Giselle, she introduces uh, Karen. Karen shows up. Karen looks good in that red. Every time she puts on that bold red, it pops. It pops. That jumpsuit was cute. That jumpsuit was cute. I'm telling you, if I had a snatcher waistline, I could rock that shit. But I'm only five feet tall. And long pants suits don't look all that great on somebody that's my thickums and then my height. If I lose a little weight, then the jumpsuit would still be cute on me. Like real slender tender chicks, they look real cute in jumpsuits to me. And I I don't like the way that they look on me, but I like the way they look. They looked good on Karen. They looked real good on Karen. Anyway, Giselle introduces Karen to um, the Expo's organizer and the girl who helped her get into Target, and that was Jermaine. Um, Karen hopped right on that. 
let me tell you, every time we seen Karen on this show and she had the opportunity to network and expand her brand, she hops on it. She's not afraid to ask questions. She's not afraid to share her um, ideals or what have you. But Giselle didn't seem happy about it. She looked like, ooh. I mean, even in the confessional, she was like, she's sitting there telling this lady things that she ain't never told me. You have not been her friend, Giselle. She would not share anything with you that she didn't want to share, Giselle. So Giselle feeling slightly. Like, because Karen is so freely discussing her business with this woman. At first, I was like, damn, Karen, <laughs> just steamrolled that whole little conversation. She just shared Karen and said, ooh, let me get to know you. You know what I'm saying? Um... But we learned later on that Giselle set this up. She wanted Karen to meet this woman and talk shop. So I, what you salty for, Giselle? What are you salty for? Oh, I'm still how uh, unclear how Giselle is unclear that they haven't had a friendship in a, in a long time. And she likes this. She ain't talking to this lady about her business, but she can't talk to me and I'm supposed to be her friend. Motherfucker, y'all just made up yesterday. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Tell one dirty secret into each other. You think that y'all besties all over again? Oh, by the way, I figured it out, y'all. Okay, so Giselle lives in Bethesda, Maryland. This is 20 minutes from Potomac. Robin lives in Baltimore, which is 52 minutes from Potomac. Um, Ashley lives in Virginia, which is 25 minutes from Potomac. Candace is in D.C., which is 30 minutes from Potomac. And Karen is in Great Falls, which is also... A 30 minutes from Potomac. Monique is the only one that actually lives in Potomac. The only one. I think her and Sharice, you know, too much screen time. They were the only two that lived in Potomac. I ain't sure where the fuck Katie lives. I ain't sure where Katie lives. And like Robin, I know that a lot with a lot of these reality TV shows, you cannot live more than an hour away from the main location. So Robin is just on the outskirts of town. And they always talk about how far it's going to take to get to Karen's. Robin is the one that lives the furthest. Anyway, so we go to New Orleans, y'all. And New Orleans got that vibe. But first, we're going to take a long look at Karen's wig. Karen M.F. Huger. Baby, you came through with this cornrow wig. It gave me anxiety. Just looking at it, it gave me anxiety. Oh, muchas gracias, anxiety girl. Just, 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 they ain't her friends. They are truly not her friend. Girl, just know, just know. Mm -mm. I probably could have let the front slide. I probably could have let the front slide. Because it was clean, you know. It just wasn't proper. Because they had the braid coming down like her. I guess they was trying to you know, cover the, the wig line. And so you saw all the extra hair. So it was, it was, I don't, the brain started hurt. Like underneath, it was just, baby, baby, when she turned around, all this space just gave me the opportunity to dive on in on her, baby. Dive in on her dome. Like, it was like a brain that just, like, jumped in right here. And it started. Let me, like, it just, I can't. The brain, like, started here, right? And it came down. And then there was another one, bam, right up here. It came down. And then somewhere in the middle, back, there was another brain. And then there was, like, it's probably about three brains. <laughs> in the back of her damn hand. Her wigologist, she get his ass kicked. They showed him earlier, and she said, I kind of want braids. He was like, Greg, we are booked. If he sat there and braided that damn wig, he needs his ass kicked. He need, got her out here looking bad like that. I was like, did Karen let Ray braid that wig? <laughs> but Ray hadn't seen it. He's like, oh, my African queen. <laughs> Ray hadn't seen it. I seen dudes in jail. Braid her better than that wig was braided. It was so ununiform. <laughs> I was appalled. <laughs> but now I can't stop laughing. Oh, the more I think about it. Oh, her braid to the back. <laughs> Looked like it was a country divided <laughs> by a massive earthquake. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh. <laughs> I'm 
post a picture up on the community board because I'm not adding any images to this video this week, y'all. Okay, and Robert ass, she ain't on time again. It be, ain't never on time for nothing, inconsiderate ass bitch. Showed up one minute before the plane was gonna shut the damn doors and talk about I'm on time. No heifer, you not. You supposed to met at Giselle's house, y'all supposed to ride over together, and you brought your... <sighs> Ashley on the bus tried it. She tried it with Candace. They having a conversation about having babies and how she was saying she don't think she ready for it yet. And they be trying to tell her how you ain't gonna never be ready to be a mom. You know, you just gonna do it when you do it. We don't like other people's kids either. And then, and no, Candace was like, oh, I need a, I need a, I need a session. You know, she's talking about, you know, a mama-daughter session where she can learn how to be a parent. You know, to, to sit there and talk with the mamas about what it is to be a mama. And Ashley gonna chime in, oh, you need a session with your mama. And then gonna say to us in confession, we know she got that mama issues. We, I'm just trying to be a friend. No, bitch. You're not her friend. You ain't trying to be her friend. You're trying to be the same old as, uh, who used to say this? What's the Bonnie Blue used to call her football head? When I used to watch Bonnie Channel, she used to crack me up calling Ashley football head. I think that was who it was. Oh. Mm. This is why Karen and Monique not fucking with you, Ashley. This is why they not fucking with you. Like I said, I can't stand Giselle, but I, I, I can't stand, I can't stand Ashley. Oh, my eyes hurt just rolling, looking at her when she come on screen. And sometimes I be watching on, on demand and you can't fast forward and I be mad as hell. I can't fast forward through her ass. Oh, so is Javette Bloober. So Giselle, she invite Katie to stay in her room so she can keep an eye on her. I was like, is that is Katie that much of a loose cannon? Still, it's four years later. Still, this season four, you still a loose cannon like this, Katie? She do look rough. Like like um, Monique was saying, she used to look all prim and proper, and now she look like she said, give us us free. I'm gonna start giving us free. That's, <laughs> as Candace said, that might be a little bit inappropriate, but it was funny. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, her and Robert sitting there laughing and kikiing about Katie. Um, no, I didn't see her doing anything too strange. She said she was going to smoke a cigarette. She went to go smoke a cigarette. She was in the spirit of New Orleans, put on her little, you know, mask, um, masquerade mask, and chill out on the balcony. I didn't see her doing anything strange, but it was like she was just a weird one. The fact that she wanted to smoke a cigarette, they thought that was weird. And the bitch smoked. Shit, what the fuck? She wouldn't be smoking around me, but still. Anyway, the ladies head out to a cooking class. Y'all, I can't do crawfish. It look like boiled roaches to me. I don't care how good y'all say it is. Y'all can throw all your garlic butter on it, whatever. Y'all for sucking that juice and the meat out the head. And, oh, ooh, ooh, mm, mm, mm. I gag at the thought of eating it. Mm, mm, I'm not doing no crawfish. I don't do no shrimp. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And I'm not going to even start on Katie's hooker wig that she had out on this episode. <laughs> she looked like she was out on a stroll. She looked like she that her just like she had a rough motherfucking night, baby. I'm just telling you. Anyway, they um tried some alligator. I tried the alligator on the cruise I went on to. They had like made it like hush puppies almost like. So it kind of tastes like dressing to me. Um, so it wasn't nothing that I was gonna eat a full meal of, but it was okay. Um but if I had it looked like a little baby alligator, I would have ate that shit. The fact that it looked like a hush puppy. But don't throw, don't throw no crawfish in the hush puppies. I'm not, I don't want to do it. And tell me, because as soon as you say the word crawfish, I'm going to see the roaches. That's all I'm going to see. I don't care if roaches are a delicacy over in Asian countries. I I don't want no roaches in my mouth. So, while they eating, Giselle goes on to explain to the girls what happened at the exo between her and, and Karen, right? Um, and how she hooked her up with old girl. And Karen was like, you know what? That was very big of you, Giselle. I, I want to thank you for that, right? And then, here we go. Here we go. Giselle, her cry me a river, play me some violins. I'm so salty for no fucking reason, feeling ass. Start the show. Karen is like, wait, what? What just happened? What happened? You know? Um... 
<laughs> Karen say, look here, business is business. Um, we try to work on building our friendship again. So let's just work on our friendship. And right now I'm at a point that I feel like I can talk about it. You know, earlier she said she was just in, um, I forgot what stage. People was talking about the stages. They were like, that was a real thing. That was a real thing. Um, she was in the discovery stage. And people was like, what the fuck is the discovery stage? And like, you knew a business model. There is such a thing as a discovery stage. And she said, you'll know about it soon, right? Giselle was in her hurt motherfucking feelings about that. I'm supposed to be your motherfucking friend, you know? Karen's face is like, what? Giselle shushed her ass. I'm talking. Karen said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What just happened? <laughs> Where is this coming from? Everybody sitting at the table looking confused. They're like, what is really? I don't understand what's happening right now. Nobody understands what's happening right now. But Karen's face is like, girl, look her. Giselle said, you want to be friends or not? Giselle, Karen wasn't trying to be your friend. You keep trying to force this friendship on her. She was like, leave me the fuck alone, right? You wouldn't miss your friend. Now she's like, you want to be my friend or not? But Karen said, listen her. Listen and listen keenly. If you want to be friends, let's be friends. But like I said, business is business. Business is my business, not yours. Um, she's like, you made it a point to introduce me to this woman. Now you act like it was a problem that I was talking to her. You know, how I handled my own business interaction once I got introduced. And Karen was like, girl, bye. I mean, really, she said, girl, bye. She got up and exited stage left. So I need a breath of fresh air. Uh-uh. This is why I don't want to be your fucking friend. This is why I can't trust you, Giselle. You know, she didn't say that to Giselle, but she said it to us. And uh, But she ain't got time for Giselle's BS. She ain't got time for it. What she say? You trying to demand something of me that you don't even fucking deserve. Tell a girl. Tell her. Tell her. I don't know what the fuck Giselle was on. I don't know what she was on, y'all. Shit. Maybe she was smoking on whatever the fuck they claim Katie be on. I'm just saying. Well, that's the end of the episode, y'all. Um, yeah. I don't know how many days we gonna spend in New Orleans. Um, but it looked like they doing a lot more turning up than 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 learning about Giselle's family heritage. It from just I I believe I uh, seen a preview, and it looks like they're gonna learn a lot about New Orleans but not necessarily directly about Giselle's family heritage, which is what she claimed she wanted to find out about. She wanted everybody to know about her and where she come from. But um, I love New Orleans. I do. Like I said, no spirits was fucking with me, though, when I was there. Ooh, them spirits was fucking with me. I'm, you know what? They may not have been fucking with me. They may have just been fucking with my mama. But let me just tell you, because I, I, I didn't watch my trips, my New Orleans things. We went down to New Orleans, um, going down the highway, a truck kicked up some mud right on the car window. Cracked the damn window of the car. The rental car we had, right? We going down, um, coming out of our hotel and about to go to the French Quarter. I broke the day no left mirror on the car. On nothing. Because I wasn't nowhere near the building, but the, it cracked and it broke the fuck and fell the fuck off. We walking down on the French Quarter. A sign almost fell. I was going to say on me, but my mama was standing right next to me, so maybe it's going to fall on her. And then we got right there on St. Louis Avenue in the front, in, in, um, the main drag. I think Bourbon Street in St. Louis Avenue. I think that's where we was at. I remember we was on St. Louis Avenue. And a trash bag flew across the street and smacked my mama in the face. I put that picture up, I believe. Where did I put the picture up at? Oh, I showed it in the video before. That, that trash bag hugging on my mama's face. She's like, she ain't never going back to New Orleans. I'm going back. I loved it there. Do, mm, 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 mm. Every time I went there, I had fun. Every time. Mm -hmm. Be in the street. I used to go to the poetry sessions. After every poem, they break out with the tubas. Do, 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 do. Everybody just getting up and get it. I love noise. Just whatever. All right, y'all. That's the end of this recap and review. Thank y'all for coming back. Thank y'all for being patient. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.